Here we see a rear hairy-armed UX designer in his natural habitat. This one has been tagged by scientists as Daniel Walter Scott. Delusionally, this curious creature believes to know the five best Figma features. Hi everyone, welcome to Dan's top five Figma features. Uh, if you're a Figma user, new or experienced, there's gonna be some great stuff in here for you. Here, we see him trying to communicate with other creatures in his tribe. Where is that coming from? All right, let's start with feature number one, copy and paste. That sounds extremely boring. What if I called it uh, super copy and paste? That doesn't help. <laughs> Don't listen to him, this is awesome. Let me show you how. So there is a couple of hows. Copy and paste has some depth, believe it or not. Okay, so we know how to copy and paste. We get a separate one, but what if we could just say, I want to copy just the style, just the properties. Okay, so right click it, copy properties. And down here, you'll see it's a different size. Watch this, it pastes the properties, but leaves the button alone. Okay, you can do it to multiple buttons. Okay, select them all and go, actually I've changed my mind and now they're all gonna be like this. Just when you thought copy and paste couldn't get any more exciting, paste for replace. What does it do? I've got this more finalized header here. I'm gonna copy it and instead of deleting and replacing, I'm gonna select it and I'm gonna say you paste to replace. And it just switches it out. Go on, I can do it for lots of them. You, 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 right click any of them, paste to replace. It's all the shortcut keys plus V. Woohoo, that's paste to replace. Ah, but you ask, what happens if there's nothing to replace? I can't use it. Don't worry, there is multi-paste. Okay, I've got this little snack bar here. I'm gonna copy it and then just select all the frames that you would like it to appear on. Then just hit paste. Command C on a Mac, Control V on a PC, just regular old paste, you ready? Boom, paste it on everything you've got selected. Doesn't have to be full mobile screens like this. It could just be inside of a card or on a form where you need to kind of add something new multiple times, multi-paste. All right, feature number two, doing math in all the fields. I can't imagine this is any more interesting than the last one. Can I turn you off? No. Hmm. All right, I bring you all the sexy features, math in fields. Okay, anything you've got selected up here, you can do some basic maths. So in this case, let's divide it by two. So forward slash two, there you go, halved it. Do the same for the height. Okay, click afterwards, forward slash two. Nice, you can do the same the opposite way. You can do times two. So the little asterisk two set there. Okay, and I can tab out to the next one and say you are times two as well. Which is handy, but I'd wanna add kind of eight pixels either side so I can say the height here, okay, or the width even, minus 16. Okay, and I can center it and it just gives me easy math done in fields. You can move things along like this guy here. Let's say I want him kind of eight pixels across from this, get him banged up next to it and I can say the X or the Y plus I want them to go eight pixels, please. There you go. Can you do multiple objects? You sure can. Select a bunch of them. Even though it says mixed, you can say, I want to divide you by two. There we go. Oh, <laughs> lines everywhere. Now we're doing it with these fields along the top here. You can do it in any old field. You can say you, I want to have a stroke color. Okay, that is 100%. No, I want it divided by three. There you go. <laughs> okay, uh, any field can be done. Let's say this font here, you can say, actually, it's 48. I want it to be minus eight. We're working at multiples of eight in this design, so I'm gonna minus eight. <laughs> okay, we can all do 40, <laughs> 48 minus eight. You might not be able to, you might be like me, math is challenging. Okay, so this is math in any old field. And a little bonus before we go is, I'm gonna undo that. What you may or may not know, and I use this a lot for fonts, is click anywhere in our fonts and go up arrow. Up, can you see it goes to 49, 50, 51, 52. Oh, do you like the clicking clacking of the keyboard? It's newish, I love it. Oh, feels good. But let's say we do get to 48 and you can go up and down, that's great. Okay, but if you hold shift and do it, it will do it in multiples of eight. You ready? Depending on how you're designing, this might be helpful. Watch this, hold shift and hit down arrow. Oh, 40, 32, all the correct sizes. Okay, rather than going into here and going, oh, where's my, uh, where's the one that I really need? Okay, there it is there. Okay, if you hold shift and go up and down, okay, it will jump to those kind of like stereotypical sizes of eight. So that's holding shift and using your up and down arrow. That also works in all fields. If I go in this and go shift, uh, go up one, can you see I move it left, <laughs> the X, hold shift, it will do it in multiples of eight as well. That is not that handy, but I guess <laughs> I, don't, I don't want you limiting that feature to the fonts. All right, that is math in fields. Cool, huh? Cool, huh?
If you're still awake, this is feature number three, bulk renaming. Okay, you can use bulk renaming for simple things and more complex things. Let's start simple. Uh, I've got a bunch of rectangles. Okay, not a great name. I can just select them all and go Command R on a Mac, Control R on a PC, and do bulk renaming. I can just say, let's just call it button. There we go. Now they're all called button. It's the basics of bulk renaming. You can get fancier though. You can say, I don't want them all called button. Let's do the same thing. Command R on a Mac, Control R on a PC, or you can right click and go to this one here. Where is it? There it is, rename. Okay, and what I want to say is keep the current name, but add some add a space. I don't know why I like spaces, but add some numbering to it as well. Click OK, or rename, there you go. Kept the name, but added some numbering to the end. Bulk renaming gets handier when we're using components, so let's make them not just a component, let's create multiple components all at once. Now in my assets panel, I can say, there it is, my button one, two, and three. But let's tidy up our assets panel using naming. So let's bulk rename them. Let's select them all, Command R. I wanna call these uh, UR buttons. Then I'm gonna use the forward slash for a different property. In this case, these are gonna be my small buttons. I'm gonna click rename. And in my assets panel here, okay, under button, they're all grouped together, which is slightly more helpful, but they're all still called small. So what we're gonna do in our layers panel, I'm gonna click on this first one here. This is singular bulk renaming. Okay, so we are going to add a forward slash and this one's actually gonna call it accent. And then I'm gonna hit tab. Look at that, you can tab down to the next one. This is my primary. And tab down again and this is my secondary. So bulk renaming will allow you to add all the kind of generic stuff and then you can use the tab renaming feature to add the individual parts. So let's have a look at our assets panel now. We've got button small and inside of there, there's all my three different colors. I can grab you or you. Nicely organized, gets better. Let's say we need our large version now. So I'm gonna duplicate these. I'm going to detach them from our component. Okay, and I'm gonna say, I don't want you all to be small. I want you to be big. Let's make you big. Here's my giant big buttons. So big, okay. But with them all selected, I can go Command R again, Control R on a PC, and I'm gonna say, actually, what I wanna do is I want you to find the word small in the name, just small, and change it with large. It's gonna keep button at the beginning and our accent primary and secondary. This is the real power of bulk renaming. Click Rename. All right, so we've got some large buttons, some small buttons, and they've all got their right colors. Let's make them all their own components. Let's grab them all, and because they use the same structure, okay, the naming structure that we've helped use with the bulk renaming, we can say combined as variants. And in my assets panel, look how tidy that is. Just one button, one button to rule them all. And inside of that, we have a small or a large version, and we can pick from the different colors. Small, I need secondary. Look at that, cool, huh? Cool, huh? Super tidy assets panel, super usable button, all with bulk renaming, and that was a quick spin through components and variables as well. If you do need to learn more about variables, there'll be a link in the top right hand corner here to how I explain variables in Figma. If that was a little bit fast, if you're a little bit newer. All right, two more tips to come, but if you are enjoying the video so far, would you give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel. Lots more like this. Look how excited he gets when people like and subscribe. <laughs> Go on, make him happy. <laughs> All right, we're up to tip number four, uh, tidy up and smart selection. Uh, ask me how to overuse a joke <laughs> in a video. It makes me laugh. Okay, tidy up and smart selection, they kind of go hand in hand. Uh, you might have noticed here, you're like, why didn't, why aren't these separated nicely? Okay, in this option here, can you see this little stripy line here? I've got these three selected. Okay, this little stripy line is our tidy up. Just tidy them up. Look at that. When they are evenly spaced, you'll get these little pink lines here. Okay, and these little pink lines here can be adjust them all in one go. Cool, huh? Okay, that's just one column. You can do a big grid of them. Okay, and what you'll notice is with them selected, it changes from three stripy lines to a little grid pattern. Look at that. And you can adjust the space between them just the same. But in a grid, it gets fancier. Let's look at this. Okay, so I'm kind of constructing a bit of a credit card form. So do the same thing, let's select all these chunks and say, actually, let's tidy it up with the little stripy lines. Let's tighten it up. And where it gets fancier is these little dots here. Now these dots won't appear unless they're evenly spaced and you're zoomed in enough. If you go back far enough, these little dots become unusable. Anyway, we're in close enough. Now I want move the name of the card up higher because it shouldn't be at the bottom here. Okay, so I click, hold and drag and look. Oh, 
<laughs> Where does it go? Doesn't matter. Smart selection will allow you to move it around and adjust it. Okay, click on any of them and then drag it and it will shuffle them around. Go on. So I've got one more. All right, little side nav. So I'm going to select all of these. I'm going to say tidy up and I'm going to zoom in so I can see the little pink dots. And we, again, we can move it around, which is handy for a menu. What's also handy is we can select on one of them. Okay, I want to click on features and I'm going to hit command D on a Mac, control D on a PC, and it makes a duplicate and spaces them all out individually. So now I can go in here and say, you are now my privacy. And it's in the wrong place. But don't worry, I can select them all and say, actually, you go there. Aha, tidy up and smart selection in Figma. That's actually way more fun. <laughs> I should have started with this instead of copy and paste the math. <laughs> anyway, uh, the best, it makes you hang around. The best stuff is towards the end. <laughs> Great YouTube strategy. All right, on to the next feature. Quickly, if you are enjoying this video and you're maybe new or maybe self-taught and you're thinking, I should really learn more about Figma, join me in my full course. That's the stuff whizzing in front of you now. It's some of the hands-on projects that you'll create in the course. There's a link in the top right and there's a link in the description as well. Watch as this majestic, hairy-armed UX designer tries to upsell his YouTube audience to his Figma training course. What an amazing sight. All right, tip number five, the last one in the top five. Uh, this one has a lame name, it's called Quick Actions. And it is the shortcut to rule all shortcuts. Uh, you don't need to remember any other than this one. Uh, let me show you what it does. Okay, quick action is that shortcut for all the shortcuts that you can't remember. So let's say that I want to change this green, okay, to something else, but I want to change all the green. How do I select all the same fill? I know it's in here somewhere. Okay, it's in one of these little drop downs. Okay, but if you don't know it off by heart, you can just use the quick action shortcut, which is command forward slash on a Mac, control forward slash on a PC. Okay, and it brings up this little dialog. And if you can kind of spell it, so I type in, I've just done select, <laughs> that's all I need. And it's given me the options, select all the same fill. There you go, selected it all. Okay, and now I can go through and change them. Okay, so it's just shortcuts that you're never gonna remember completely you can use quick actions to find it. Uh, I use it a lot for fonts. This font here, I've discovered it's Inter. You're not meant to be Inter, I'm using something else somewhere else. It's called Doris, or Dorsa. Let's pick open sense because I can remember that. But I can say, select it, command forward slash, or control forward slash, and I can say, select. And there's another one in here with the same font. Okay, and it's selected everything in this document with the same font, and I can say, you are now boring old open sense. Boring, but consistent. Any shortcut, I might decide that, okay, this one here needs to be uppercase. I know it's in there somewhere. Command or control forward slash, type upper. There you go, uppercase. Lovely. And watch this. If I click on this, and if I hit my uh, quick action shortcut again, you can see it remembers the last thing, so you don't have to go and find them. You just click on them. All right, a little bonus before we wrap up. There is a free downloadable printable uh, Figma cheat sheet. Uh, it's kind of up on screen here. Uh, there will be a link up here and there'll be a link in the description for that free. Print it off, stick it next to your computer and be more Figma awesome. So which of those top five did you, you know, was there any aha moments that are gonna change your Figma life for the better? Let me know in the comments and I'll be reading those. Uh, and this is my like top five of like 50. <laughs> uh, if you think maybe, if you'd enjoy another video, let me know in the comments and I'll be reading those as well. And we'll see if we can make a next top five. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I think we've already done that. Oh, oh yes, so we have. I think I fell asleep. My apologies. How to overuse the gag, everyone. Also, be sure to follow me on the social medias. Uh, these are my main frequently hung out places. Uh, follow me on those. Uh, also, if you want to uh, remember, go further with Figma, check out my full course. Okay, when you sign up for that course, you also get access to design challenges. Okay, there's an exclusive podcast on my website as well where I talk to other UX designers, uh, plus lots of other design courses, including Adobe XD. <gasps> Plus I'm there as well to help you out with your questions. Plus I've got some teaching assistants, amazing teaching assistants to help you as you go through the course. And when you complete the Figma course, there is a certificate for you there as well. And lastly, uh, there are more top five videos that I've made for the different software that I know and love and teach. 
Uh, there'll be links for those in the description uh, below. But that is it. Thank you for being part of this top five Figma video. Thank you, fake David Attenborough. I believe he's trying to communicate with me. Alas, with his primitive Kiwi accent, I'm unsure if anyone understands him.